Hello everybody in Pro Tools Answers land, Andy Hagerin here. It's the shank of the year, October. It's starting to get cooler here in Tokyo, the leaves are starting to change, a little bit of a snap in the air, and a new version of Pro Tools. That's right, Pro Tools 2021.10 has just released. And in addition to the normal bug fixes and operating system upgrades, there are a few features I think are worth taking a look at. Let's take a look at them now. Now, one of the things that Avid's been focused on recently and made a lot of advances is your ability to customize the GUI. So we have the bright and the dark now um, as far as themes, and we've gradually been adding more flexibility. We're going to add even more. Now, one of the things that I personally find is that when I'm dealing with the dark mode in a dark room, it's nice not to have a whole bunch of contrast. It's very easy on my eyes, but sometimes seeing the detail within the Pro Tools screen can be a little tough for me. Now, I'm an older guy. I wear Coke bottle glasses, so my vision is not fantastic. We now have high contrast mode, and let me show you a little bit about what that does. So I'm going to go to my palette window, and you'll see right here in the general section that I can turn on high contrast GUI. Now, watch what happens. First of all, you'll see that there are lines that delineate the tools up in the toolbar. You'll see that things just get generally a little bit more sharp. Uh, sliders, for example, are called out. So it makes life a little bit easier in dark rooms and for people that don't have fantastic vision. There's a couple other things. Check out what happens when I deactivate a track. You'll see here that I've got an X. So that's another visual indicator telling me that that's an inactive track. If I deactivate a plugin, you'll see that there's a little X there as well. Very cool. So this is all visual cues that are going to help me to see a little bit better in a dark room, even with the dark background that I personally like. Now, there are a lot of other things that have changed. Let me call out a few. First of all, let's take a look at the background. You can change the background color. And while you don't have unlimited flexibility on that background color, you do have a few choices and you can choose how bright or dark you want that background color to be. You can also change the text color. Similarly, you've got a few choices here and you can choose the one that you want to use. Now, this next one isn't a new feature, but you're not going to hear a lot of people talk about, but I really like it. One of the things that tends to blend in a little bit too much for my old eyes are the tools in the toolbar. So one of the things you can do here is you can brighten up the toolbar only and leave everything else alone so you can find the edges of the buttons just a little bit easier. All of these things are able to be saved in presets. So Pro Tools has made some significant improvements in your GUI customization. Now, way back years ago, Avid built some transport and mixing controls into M-Audio keyboards. We owned M-Audio at the time. And it worked okay. It worked fine. Um, I don't think it was particularly popular, but it worked fine, right? And it was certainly one step towards more integration with keyboards and Pro Tools. Pro Tools 2021.10 takes that one step further with complete control compatibility. So if you have a Native Instruments complete control keyboard, now Pro Tools can utilize the features that that controller provides. So it's similar, but way better than what we had with M-Audio. You have transport control, you have the ability to choose sounds from within the keyboard. Um, you have focus follow, which is supported. Um, some basic mixer controls, including solos and mutes, and undoing and redoing. There's, there's a ton of really cool stuff that you can do in the keyboard and Pro Tools will respond to it. So it's great. It's a massive step forward. How do you set it up? Here's where you do it. So I'm going to go to the setup menu and go into peripherals. And in the MIDI controller tab, you can see that now I have Native Instruments Complete Control. Just choose that and you're on the way. I would love to show you workflows with this, but I don't have a Complete Control controller here. But if you do, that's how you can set it up and you're off to the races. Over the last few versions, Pro Tools has made a few changes regarding track width. And I'm talking about track width in the terms of the number of channels in a track, not the physical track width. So for example, you can move plugins to tracks of different widths easily. You couldn't do that before. You can also change the width of a track after it's been created, which you couldn't do before. You can also even filter the track widths that you'll see in the new track dialog box. So that's a direction that Avid has been going. And they've got one big step further with more flexible track routing. Now, this feature applies primarily to Pro Tools Ultimate because of the additional uh, track widths beyond mono and stereo. And what we can do now is you can assign the output of any track to any output width. So stereo, mono, 5.1, 7.1, anything like that. There's no restrictions anymore. 
Now this feature is a bit of a tweaker's paradise. Let's take a look. I'm going to go into my setup menu, down to my preferences, and then into the mixing tab. You'll see at the bottom, we've got a new section called routing coefficients. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that you've got two sets of preferences, one for your new session defaults for when you're creating a new session and a current session settings section to tell you what your settings are in the session that you're in right now. Now, at this point, it's probably worth telling you that the settings you set here travel with your session or session templates. So if you do a lot of work along these lines and if these mixed coefficients are going to change depending upon the work that you do, creating session templates is a great way to go. In each one of these sections, you've got two different options, either a classic option or a modern option. Now, when you're using classic, you're using the coefficients that have been used in previous versions. Now, if we go with a modern view, you'll see that I've got a lot more flexibility and choice. Let's take a look at your 5X to 7X fan out. So if you've got a 5X path, fanning it out to a 7X path, including a 7.1.2 path. Now, if I click this menu button, you'll see that I can choose to have my surrounds go directly to the sides, directly to the rears, or to be split between the sides and the rears. I have that choice. I can choose whichever one suits my workflow, and I'm done with that. Now let's go down to a fold down from a 7.x to a 5.x. So if I have a 7.1.2, for example, going down to a 5.1 mix, I have different choices. I can either choose to take my sides and put them into the surrounds, or I can take my sides and split them between the surrounds and the left and right speakers in the front. When folding down from a surround format to stereo, your options get a little bit simpler. You can choose the level at which your surrounds are going to go to stereo, and that applies to all of the surround channels equally. And then here at the bottom, you can choose, and this is cool, if you're folding down from a dot one format, 5.1 for example, to a dot zero format, 7.0, for example, you can choose whether or not to include the LFE. If you don't want it, just unclick that checkbox. If you do want it, click the checkbox and you could choose the level at which the LFE goes into that fold down. Now, will this feature replace the down mixer plugin entirely? Not for me, I don't think, because the down mixer plugin on, for example, a, a master bus or something like that gives me greater control over individual channels than this does. But this is definitely going to make my mixing much more simple because I'm not going to have to worry about massive amounts of sub paths, quick fold downs from multi channels down to stereo for sends. It's going to allow me to mix a lot quicker in a surround environment internally. But there is one thing to watch out for backward compatibility. Make sure that if you're going to be backward compatible with another version of Pro Tools that you don't go deep into this feature because this is one of those things that can get broken if you're saving the session as an older version. Not a problem, but just something to be aware of. And last but certainly not least, we have a couple more. If you have a carbon, now you can control the preamps on that carbon just like we could with the old Avid Pre. And if you're using an M1 computer, your video now works, but there's an important caveat. If you have a video peripheral, that's still not supported, it's still not going to work, but your video window in an M1 now will. And there you have it, sports fans. Five things I think were worth taking a look at. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Take it easy, and we'll see you at the next episode of Pro Tools Answers. Bye-bye.